All right, guys, gals, and everything in between. So the world's exploding as we know it. There's chaos in the streets, dogs and cats living together. And well, I want to talk about the war between, I guess, the Gummer lineage now and mutant worms. All right, guys, gals, and everything in between, I'm here today to review for you Tremors 4, The Legend Begins. So Tremors 4, The Legend Begins is yet another uh, installment in the Tremors franchise. This one actually takes place before all the events of Tremors 1. In fact, a hundred years before Tremors 1. Because, actually, even though Tremors 1 came out in 1990, a lot of people don't realize the film actually takes place in 1989. So we're a hundred years before that in 1889. This time, it uh, Michael Gross is back playing uh, Burt Gummer's ancestor. And he might as well still be Burt Gummer, but one of the things that they did really, really well in this Tremors film is that he's not the the Burt Gummer doomsday prepper type just set in the Old West. He's actually the direct opposite of Burt Gummer. He's really passive. He's an elitist. He's kind of, he plays that almost like rich billionaire politician type and he does it very well. He doesn't even shoot guns. He, he has somebody do that for him as he specifies, but he has to step up because graboids are here. This is a really solid installment. Is it perfect? No, um, it, it does have some issues, but it has a lot of charm. They got rid of a lot of the hokier effects from Tremors 3, and they incorporated the practical effects from Tremors 1 and 2 that we very much know and love. And that is a huge strength. It feels like it has way more production value behind it than Tremors 3 did. It, it really is solid. Like, if this was Tremors 2, and Tremors 2 and 3 never existed, I it, it, it would have looked like it had the exact same production value as Tremors 1. And that is an extreme strength. It's also not shy of having some really funny lines. You missed with a cannon! I, I love that line. It is so good. And one of the things that... This film starts off on the right foot to me. Because it actually, the way it begins, feels very much like a Doctor Who episode to me. In the, if they went back in time to the Old West, you could have put the Doctor Who titles on the beginning scene right after, and I'd have bought it. I'd have said, yep, yeah, it looks like we're starting a, like a David Tennant era uh, Doctor Who episode. And that's, that's really neat. It did have that kind of feel. It's a weird comparison to make, I know. But it, it somehow has that Doctor Who feel. And it's a really, really welcome change. Uh, because a lot of times when sequels try and go this far down the line, they try and change too much stuff. This one changes just enough, and it adds a little bit to the Graboid lineage and legacy. And it does it really solidly. I have, I have very, very um, like positive outlooks on this film. Uh, I was re-watching it again last night uh, in preparation for this review, and it, it just, it, it holds up. It's one of those films that, it's light. It, it doesn't really rely on too much lore, too much backstory. It keeps it simple. It almost reboots the franchise because they reintroduce Graboids, and they it, it feels very similar to the first one, but it just kind of does it slightly differently, and it's... It's one of those what I call a sequel boot. Um, I know, they've, they've come up with other terms now for, for this stuff, but I've always said sequel boot, which is it still is in the same line in canon as the others, but you don't really need to have watched the other ones to watch this Tremors film. Whereas I feel Tremors 2 and 3, you absolutely need to watch the others. So that is the big drastic difference. Um, and it just, it stands on its own. Tremors 4 is a really solid time all around. Um, and Chang's Market, they really flesh out those characters, and it's kind of neat to see, and, and seeing how it all kind of leads into Gummer's, uh, where he is in the future, family-wise, it kind of ties it up with a nice bow, a little hokey and on the nose, but it does work for me. And I have to say that, that on movies like Tremors 4, you do have to take a couple leaps where you're like, would they really do that? And fine. 
It, it's one of those that it, it's just a casual escapist film. If you're looking to escape for, for just a solid like hour and a half, it's a solid prequel and it, it, it doesn't fall into the trap that most prequels do, which is it it takes place with none of the characters from the original. So most prequels, they're not smart and they, they take a character that you know is alive in the original installment and you go, oh, well there's no tension there because you already know that character's going to live at the end. So this one, none of the original characters are in it because it takes place a hundred years beforehand. So the stakes are just as dire as it would be if it was the first installment. And that was a very, very, very good idea on behalf of Tremors. This film is definitely one of those worth watching with a conventional rating if this just came out in real life, big screen worthy. It's a solid time. I can watch it pretty much whenever. It's, it's, the best way to put it is it's kind of harmless. All right, guys, gals, and everything in between, what did you think of Tremors 4? I've kind of heard people say it's okay, and I've heard people say they love it. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. I got plenty more videos coming to you. Love you guys.